Be sure to leave us a comment, like and subscribe, and we'll be back next week for more Crime Suspects. Never mind the ballots. A brand new look at all things politics from The Sun with me, Harry Cole. Watch my big end of the week with no stone unturned. Every Thursday evening, exclusively with The Sun. Look, I'm getting ready for my new primetime show on talk TV and radio, 7 o'clock Saturday night, James Whale Unleash. I don't need you coming in here, following me around with a car. I'm so sorry about this. Saturdays at 7 on talk TV. This is Talk TV. Want to get to grips with the stories that really matter? To cut through the spin and the BS. Want unvarnished and fiery debate? Then join us for Crosstalk. One o'clock every weekday. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! <laughs> it's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> to... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Feltz, every weekday at 4pm, only on Talk, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker.
Very good morning to you. It's just gone three minutes past five o'clock. It's Monday, the 25th of March. I'm James Max, and this is your early breakfast show here on Talk, where we're on TV, online, on DAB, and on your smart speaker. We're live from the news building here in London. So, coming up between now and six, yes, of course, you can help me review the papers. Uh, we also uh, have a conversation coming up with Vicky Price from the Centre for Economics and Business Research. We'll be looking into the changes to workers' rights post-election. When's the right time to sell your home? And will the triple lock still be in place for pensioners? Uh, but this morning, China and Russia are implicated on spreading royal misinformation. Cyber attacks on British institutions are on the rise. And a terrorist attack in Russia, leaving 137 people dead, indicates a resurgent threat from ISIS. What are the biggest threats to the United Kingdom? So, very good morning to you. So, China hack attack on UK, says the front page of today's Sun newspaper. Government to punish cyber raid, but it's a story that we hear more and more about. But then if you turn to other papers, the Times, for example, uh, Beijing blamed for malign cyber attack on election watchdog. That's one of their headlines. But then also uh, they have pictures... Uh, of a nation in mourning. A Russians gathered yesterday outside Crocus City Hall where at least 137 people, including three children, were killed on Friday night. Islamic State have released graphic video of gunmen shooting at people in the concert venue, undermining the Kremlin's attempts to blame Ukraine for the massacre. Moscow concert attack. Putin directs Russian anger at Ukraine as suspects are interrogated. Uh, this is the Financial Times... And uh, The Guardian suspects appear in court accused of Moscow attack that left 137 dead. Uh, meanwhile, The Telegraph, China and Russia behind slurs on Princess Whitehall sources warn disinformation online may be used to destabilise society. And there are a whole load of these different stories which all uh, conflate together, perhaps, to indicate that whether it's online, whether it's cyber attacks or whether it's other things, these are all things which are perhaps of concern to us. So that's why I'm asking you, what are the biggest threats to the UK? Is it cyber attacks? Is it the march of technology? Is it that uh, ISIS or IS has never gone away? What are the threats that perhaps destabilise our nation? I mean, for example, we've looked at Russia as a potential threat. We looked at China as a potential threat. But is it those states that are a threat or is it the technology that underlines them? Uh, what is it that we in this nation should be concerned about? That every so often we'll look at the numbers of people who are in our armed services and we'll say, it's not enough, we're not spending enough on defence. But is that the kind of defence that we should even be looking to spend money on? Does it really make a difference? Are people going to use uh, missiles and troops? Or are they going to use technology and infiltration? Are they going to use influence and destabilisation as techniques uh, to undermine us, our culture, our country. And that's why I'm asking you, what are the biggest threats to the United Kingdom? 0344 499 1000. That's the telephone number. That's also the number you can use to WhatsApp me, should you wish. You can send me a text, 87222. Start your text with the word talk. And you can uh, do a, um, a tweet X thing, whatever. At the James Max, at Talk TV. OK, let's go to uh, your call straight away. What are the biggest threats to the United Kingdom? Heather, good morning to you. You are in Girvan. Hello. It's raining here in Girvan. Oh, in Girvan. I said Girvan because yeah, I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll make it sound exotic. So it's tipping down with rain where you are, is it? Yep, it is raining here in Girvan in South Asia in Scotland, West uh, Coast. Right, and, uh, and uh, the biggest threat to yes. our country is the jihad terrorists, and I fear the worst that we could be facing under that nine eleven situation. What Even again? Worse. Yeah, and uh, because like when when we've been hearing these uh, threats that we're on now. Uh, from down in London, where you are. It is real. The terror is real. 
we're going to have to face it because while these people keep on coming on boats, we don't know that these migrants on these boats are terrorists that have been trained in Afghanistan or Iraq or... So, uh, so, so you think Sudan that the okay? So you think that the people who are coming over on boats are the terrorist threat to the United Kingdom? Yeah. Okay. And if we don't take this serious, we need to stop these boats. And if our prime minister of this country, do you know what I would do? Sanction France and san give a hard sanction to France and Europe and tell them straight, if they do not stop the boats getting into the water, we will sanction them hard and fast. But do you they think that would... OK, I, 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 hear, I hear you, Heather, but do you think that would solve the problems that, for example... Yes. Me, yeah, but many, many of the terrorist threats that we've had in this country are already here. So then what are you going to do? Uh, we're going to have to sort it out. The government has got to get their grip on it. But then what about... OK, fine, fine, fine. I, I hear you. Smart. I hear you, but then what about these cyber attacks? They're not coming from people on little boats. Cyber attacks is mainly from uh, places like Russia, China... Um, so how do, how do we deal with those? And I, North Korea. How, how do we deal with those? Well... We have to start putting strict regulations on cyber. We're going to have to get up on the uh, social uh, media aspects of it all. And if we do not get a grip and put sanctions on them, and if they do not do anything to improve our safety on social media or any other platforms, we're going to have to shut them down. Oh. Right. OK, well, that's that's an interesting start to our conversation, Heather. Um, which newspaper would you like? Uh, Club of Times. And a and number of... I want the, uh, the table tennis, uh, what call it, paddle. Well, I... And I want number seven. Uh, oh, I see. Um, yes, I don't have the, uh, the paddle, so I just have to shout loudly on the basis that... Uh, uh, producer Phil doesn't agree with the paddles, uh, so they don't appear on a Monday and a Tuesday. However, I can well, go seven, yeah. and also yeah, I can tell you some very interesting news, Heather. Yeah. French winemakers are set to increase the official champagne making area, according to the Times newspaper, by 15% to meet demand. The landmark move, representing the biggest change in the sector for decades, comes almost 100 years after mayors in eastern France spurned the chance to join their neighbours in making sparkling wine. In 1927, fearing higher tax and bureaucracy, several mayors decided that local farmers would be better off growing cereal crops than becoming uh, one of the officially designated districts where champagne could be produced. So, fizz pop, more champagne, Heather. Well, we've got our own champagne... Why what? We've got our own champagne. We do have our own English sparkling, which is very nice. Yeah? Yeah. So there we go. So you don't want it. All right. OK, that's Heather and Govan. Thank you very much indeed for your call and starting our conversation. So, talking to you this morning about uh, the biggest threats to the United Kingdom. Why? Because many of the papers are focusing on cyber threats. They're talking about influencing and misinformation. But they're also talking about the IS attack in uh, Moscow. 0344 499 1000. Eric is in Norwich. Hello, Eric. Morning, uh, I was going to say morning, Eric. Morning, James. Well, uh, I'll say morning, Eric. You say morning, James. It sounds like we're all compensmenters. So, uh, tell me, what are the biggest threats to the United Kingdom, do you think? Well, I think Heather has, uh, has said it all, what I was going to say, to be honest. Oh. But I, I, I don't understand why um, the French seem to allow uh, these boats coming across. Um, that's certainly, if we could stop at source, and I don't understand why the French don't do that. Do you that. think, We've, though, that the people coming over on the boats are the biggest threat to the United Kingdom? I do. I think there, oh. um, there are a lot of radical people there who... Um, I mean, we don't know who they are, but that seems to take so long to process them. But then there are so many people who have come to the United Kingdom. I mean, there are some quite significant issues that there are many people who have come to the United Kingdom probably over the last 30 years. So what are you going to do? You're going to start some kind of 
weird rooting out of people and where they've come from, uh, see whether their views are aligned with ours. I mean, you, you know, the, the genie's out the bottle, Eric. That is, and, uh, and the genie is out of the bottle, but the uh, people who usually come here, they usually uh, keep to their own. You know, the, um, the Muslims, people seem to be afraid to say they're Muslims, but they do... Uh, you know, they, birds of a well, there are more than three together. million people of the Muslim faith. I don't think you can tar them all with the same brush, can you? No, you can't. No, no. But no. There, there are there are certain factions of it which you and well, I. Well, there might be, but then there are factions of other people who are um, uh, radicalised or otherwise. And if you have a look at the papers, then a lot of the threats are coming from. I mean, Beijing blamed for malign cyber attack on the election watchdog. <clears throat> you know, that's that's not coming from within. Uh, China hack attack on UK says the Sun newspaper. Uh, China and Russia behind slurs on Princess as the Daily Telegraph. So you can talk about the small boats and, and, and threats and, and religion all you like. Uh, there are threats from outside too, aren't there? There are. Uh, and I don't know whether you can stop these cyber attacks. Um, and I don't know what's up with Putin or Beijing, mm. why they want to interfere with our country. We try not to interfere with their country too much. Um, you know, except well, you say war. that, but we have imposed some quite significant sanctions on them. Yeah, they still seem to be um, thriving, though, don't they? Well, they seem to be doing all right, but then if you have lots of oil and lots of minerals, then you're going to do OK, aren't you, regardless of whatever sanctions we put in place? Because there are well, plenty Putin, of countries who will buy them, uh, even if we don't. Well, yeah, I mean, Putin seemed to do whatever he likes, doesn't he? You know, um, he, he came, I, I thought how false he was when he was at the... Um, where they, all them poor people got killed, you know, shot in the, his face. I thought that was... Um, that was well acted. I mean, it's interesting that um, Russia seems to be blaming Ukraine for uh, this latest IS attack when uh, the, the papers say, and who knows whether they're right or not, they said that the West informed Russia and said there was a significant um, uh, terror threat and Russia chose to ignore it. Well, they're saying that that was um, the Ukrainians, but that wasn't. I mean, you heard that guy who was taking the, uh, you know, the, the mobile phones and they were shouting uh, Allah Akbar and, uh, you know, God is great and all that type of thing. It's quite obvious that was from Islamic State. Hmm. So back to the UK, um, are, are you telling me that our biggest threat is from people coming over on small boats? Uh, not totally, but there are. And they've got, you just don't know who's coming over until they process them. You know, they should be processed. But then you don't know who's coming over. over, who's coming over legitimately. I mean, you, you know, just... Just because they come over a small boat doesn't mean that they're any more dangerous than anybody else, does it? Well, no, exactly. But I'm, I'm sure there may, may be, there may well be a, a faction of them. What are? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, for clarity, uh, I don't want to see any more people arriving on small boats. I think it's uh, absolutely extraordinary that one has a country in um, it, as one of our neighbours, AK France, and that. You know, what's going on across Europe is absolutely horrific in terms of people living in uh, tented cities, uh, people migrating and moving across and uh, wanting to come to Britain uh, from elsewhere. I think, you know, the, the borders have been porous uh, and I think we are all suffering as a result. And I don't think that we've had a particularly coordinated response to it. Whether or not I think it's the biggest threat that um, we have as a nation, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, uh, I mean, the biggest threat to all of uh, Europe then perhaps is is the immigrants, you know, the illegal immigrants. I was going to say immigrants, the illegal immigrants coming coming through from wherever they're coming from. Well, maybe, but then on the other hand, one has to look at the cause as to why these people are displaced, why they are coming, uh, and why they've been radicalised. Um, there are a whole range of issues. OK, there we go, Eric. You've taken our conversation further forward. Which newspaper would you like this morning? Um... Could we have the I, please, page 14? Um, I think the answer to that is yes. Uh, it is yes. Let's see what's delving on page 14 of the I. Oh. Here we go. Um, the government is set to meet sub-postmasters convicted and sacked during a second IT scandal at the post office so their voices can be properly heard. Postal Affairs Minister Kevin Hollenrake and Carl Cresswell, the senior civil servant overseeing compensation schemes, have agreed to meet former sub-postmasters in person to discuss capture, accounting software rolled out in the 90s. Um, uh, it follows claims that they were punished after suffering unexplained financial losses whilst using the system. In a precursor to the Horizon scandal, sub-postmasters say they were forced to hand over cash, sacked and prosecuted. God, there's no end to it, is he?
there is no end to it. There we go. Eric, thank you very much indeed for your call. What are the biggest threats to the UK is what I'm asking you this morning. We've got two free lines into the building. You could grab one of them if you want. The telephone number is 0344 499 1000. We take more of your calls next here on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have was moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five twenty-two. It's time for a good morning too. So, uh, on many of the front pages of the papers today, they're talking about China and Russia. They're implicated on spreading royal misinformation. Um, also, cyber attacks on British institutions are on the rise. And then, of course, over the weekend, we had the terrorist attack in Russia, leaving one hundred and thirty-seven people dead, indicating a resurgent threat from uh, Islamic State. But what are the biggest threats to the United Kingdom? 0344 499 1000. Uh, we've had two votes so far for small boats and migrants. Not sure that's the biggest threat. I think it's, a, it's something that needs to be tackled. I think it has its problems and issues. I'm not sure necessarily it's the biggest threat to the United Kingdom. But perhaps you can uh, tell me what you make of it. Meanwhile, let's go back to your calls. 0344 499 1000. That's the telephone number, by the way. Uh, Khalid is in Leicester. Khalid, good morning. Good morning, James. Uh, good morning, Khalid. So, uh, what's the biggest threat to the UK? I think the UK foreign policy, I mean, prevention is better than cure. So, meaning that, you know, the, our unconditional support of Israel's actions against innocence is, is the biggest threat. That can be, that, that will have repercussions somewhere along the line. People will so, not do, you, say, do you not think that uh, Britain should have supported Israel in the light of the October the 7th attacks? 
No, not at all, because Palestinians have been going uh, October the 7th for decades on a, on a regular basis. They've been getting attacks in Gaza. They've been so many, so many are, you pre- are you prepared to condemn what happened on October the 7th? Of course, we condemn the killing of innocents. That's, that's totally abhorrent and should you know, should never have occurred in the first place. But what has happened after that? So you, so you horrible. would, so just to clarify, so you would, uh, you would condemn the killing of innocent Israelis on October the seventh. Yes, yes, of course, any okay. innocent life, regardless of the Israeli or Palestinian, whoever. I'm saying that Israelis that were killed on the October seventh, I condemn that, of course. But at the same time, we have to condemn what Israel has done after that, over 32 Well, we don't have to, but um, you can if you like. Well, if you don't condemn that, then you can't condemn the, the October 7th attack as well. That doesn't well, make sense. You can, because the thing no, is can't. that... Well, you can, because the whole point is that uh, Israel is trying to defeat Hamas. Hamas could have stopped all of this, if they, first of all, if they hadn't undertaken the attack in the first place. But the second point is that Hamas... Uh, do you think that Hamas is a terrorist organisation? Hamas is a reaction, and should never. I mean, I don't, I don't agree with the actions. But I'm saying Hamas is a reaction to all the decades of oppression and the brutality do, do and, the you think, and the ethnic cleansing that's been taking place. Well, there hasn't, there hasn't been ethnic cleansing. Do you think that Hamas is a terrorist organisation? I told you, Hamas is a reaction to okay. all the action. That so, is, that, that, so that the point that here is place. that there are many people, and including the British government, who seem to who do classify Hamas as a terrorist organisation because of the way they operate. Okay, how does one deal with Hamas on the basis that Hamas does not recognise Israel as a nation and does not believe, uh, to its core, that Jewish people should exist? No, I think I think actually the problem is you conflate Zionism with Judaism, which is which is totally incorrect. Judaism completely prohibits the action the action that Israel has taken after seven. But Zionism October. Zionism is just uh, Jewish people having the right to a homeland. Uh, is is there a problem with that, Khalid? There's no problem with Israel living free without without any um, threat from anybody. That that's that's perfect. There's no problem with that. But the, when they oppress others, okay, but that's Zionism. Sorry, that's Zionism. So, what is yep. the problem with 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 Jewish people having a home state? Oh, there's no problem with having a Jewish state. We're okay, not, fine. Saying, but ha- no but Hamas that. thinks that there is. No, the problem is when you when you when you Hamas um, does not recognise that Israel exists. No, the thing is, look, uh, James, when you lock up people in in the Gaza Strip. Lock them up. They can't. They can't get out without any permission. They can't do anything. No. 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 Airport, but that's. No, but nothing. you see. But that's partly because the international community, uh, including uh, the likes of Egypt and others, have not wanted to recognise that Palestinians have uh, a right to exist and have a right to uh, in in the same way that Israel has a right to exist. They they haven't recognised that Palestinians also have a right to um, exist and have a, a, a state. But part of the issue that we've got is that. Hamas has been taking money that was supposed to be for humanitarian aid, piling it into building tunnels, piling it into buying rockets. Uh, that's been fueled by the foreign policy of other nations that has then meant that Israel has, uh, for many years, they've bowed to international pressure and they're not dealt with a problem on their doorstep. Uh, when October the 7th happened, they stopped listening to the international community, rightly or wrongly, and they decided to take action themselves because nobody else was prepared to take action against Hamas. So, you know, conflicts happen, Khalid. No, this is not a conflict. This is total oppression, James. Even in the West Bank, look at the West Bank, how many, over, over nearly, nearly, nearly 600 people have been killed in but the are West you, are you telling me that that particular, I, I don't happen to agree with your assessment of it, but are you telling me that um, what is going on there is the UK's biggest threat? What is going on there, our support, our unconditional support of Israel's action. But it's not unconditional support. Of course it is. We, 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 are, we are backing them to the hilt. We, our Prime Minister went there and told Netanyahu that we want you to win. What does that yes. mean? That means I do what you want. It doesn't mean do what, do what you, want. you want. It of means, course, it means win, but it, it also means defeating... Hamas. Now, that you seem not, not to not think that Hamas us. is a problem, but Hamas is a problem, Khalid. Uh, so, so, OK, let's say, let's, let's, for argument's sake, Hamas is defeated, fine. Then what? Are we going to carry on uh, supp- um, oppressing the Palestinians? Are we going to carry on building roadblocks in, in the West Bank? Are we going to carry on killing and imprisoning people from the West Bank and the Gaza Strip? The, so if that carries on, there will be another Hamas or Hamas 2 or Hamas 3 or whatever. 
People, when you keep on suppressing and oppressing people, you cannot expect no reaction whatsoever. Well, it's not people a question really of react. oppressing people. It's a question of if you have people who are living on your doorstep who do not want you to exist, then that is going to be a problem, isn't it, Khalid? No, so, it's, so it's, if you no, speak to no, yes. many people who are look, there, are, there are a whole range of different views. I'm sure across the Palestinian people about um, you know Israel and its existence, but there are quite a lot of Palestinians who do not believe that Israel should exist. And until or unless uh, people accept that Israel is a nation state and it is going to exist, then that's going to be that's going to be the core of the issue. But I don't think that's the biggest threat to the United Kingdom. No, but you, let me tell you something, James. Right, every. Everybody reacts, me and my siblings react, react different, differently to any given situation. I'm probably the calmest of the lot, right? Honestly, right? So everybody reacts differently. Now, you cannot expect everybody to say, keep on, oh, we're just having conversations, we keep on having conversations and everything would be okay. Somebody's going to react in a, in a, in a t t deeply disturbing way or a mental or whatever you want to call it. Yes, but th anyway. this, yes, like October the 7th. But frankly, Khalid, um, if Hamas had recognized that they had. Um, perpetrated uh, one of the most uh, heinous of crimes on October the 7th. And if they had uh, responded in a different way to what Israel has subsequently done, um, then we would be in a different place. But they've continued to fire rockets, they've continued to use um, innocent children, uh, families, babies, uh, as human shields. Uh, they have continued to uh, operate an aggressive stance. You know, if, if there had been no fight on the other side, then it would have been a very quick operation. But it's very clear no. that they've been putting up a defence. No, but James, I don't agree with your assessment. And we keep hearing this human shield. That's ludicrous, right? Like, if, if that was yes, case, it is ludicrous. It's a very just, stupid thing to do. No, just, just over a year ago, remember Olivia Pratt-Cobel, the nine-year-old girl who was shot inside her house? Somebody was shooting from the outside. He shot her and, and her mother... How and, you can uh, conflate? I don't even want to go down this road. You can't. You can't bring a, a, a case like that into a situation like this. It just. No, I, not, it makes no sense, Khalid. It makes no sense. Anyway, look. The question this morning here is: What are the biggest threats to the UK? And if you're telling me that the biggest threat to the UK is uh, the UK's stance uh, supporting Israel, then I, I think you come from a different planet. No, it's not a different plan. I'm telling you, people are infuriated. Millions are marching. Millions are, you know, the, the, of course they are. The, the majority of the, the 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 public, I would say, at least ninety five percent. People of the want to see an end to the fighting. End. People want to see an end to the suffering. Absolutely agreed. But until or unless the likes of Hamad, uh, Hamas and indeed others uh, recognise that Israel has a right to exist, we're going to have a problem, aren't we? Of, of course, Israel has the right to exist. What yes, but you that, say that, but the, the people who they're fighting against don't even say that, Khalid. So that's the problem. That they is, don't no, think that, that Israel should exist. They don't no, think that, that Jewish people have the right to uh, exist on this planet. James, do, do, seriously, do, do, do me a favour. I get some Zublot on your show. He will explain to you exactly what Hamas want, exactly what Fatah want, exactly what the PLA want. And they will, he will explain to you that nobody's saying that we want to get rid of the Israel. Nobody's saying that. They're saying that we so what want does, the right to exist. They frequently say that, Khalid. And who? OK, what does from the river to the sea mean? River to the sea, that everybody who lives from the river to the sea should have equal rights. Okay. Everybody should live in peace. That, that, that might mean that to you, uh, but it doesn't mean that to many of the people who call for it. No, no. From the river to the sea means that uh, what is currently Israel will be Palestine. And, and I'm afraid that is not going to happen. Full stop. Netanyahu, the end. Netanyahu picked up... You, you saw him pick up that uh, map where he, he, showed, he showed a map from river to the sea without Palestinians anyway. at all. OK, that's fine. He's that's, 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 so, the one who's saying that. So... So what? So you think that the biggest threat to the United Kingdom is a um, is a surge in popularity uh, for uh, the likes of Hamas within our shores? Is that oh, it? Did I say that? Did I? Say no, that? I'm just asking say, you. No, don't, you're don't just telling me that a lot of people are very angry in this country. So I I, I look and, and think that maybe there's a threat here in the UK. I mean, there's a threat here in the UK of anti-Semitism. There's a threat here in the UK of. Um, a, a, a huge swathe of the population who are not happy with Britain's foreign policy. I get it. I understand. Uh, I happen not to agree with it. But uh, is that really our biggest threat? Uh, I don't want to say our biggest threat, but I'm saying it is. It is. This has infuriated people. How can we watch innocent children being killed and massacred on, oh, a, regular, it, on a daily basis? 
because, on a daily basis. But then, there, but then there are people who are being massacred on a daily basis around the world and around the globe. You just happen not to be seeing it, Khalid. So you could argue and say that the, the, the media and some aspects of the media have, um, uh, have amplified what's going on there because you show an innocent child who has either been injured or harmed or their family has been killed, of course it's going to pull on the heartstrings and of course it's going to uh, enrage. That's exactly what it does. And people might so suggest that so there's been me media manipulation, Khalid, from the way that the story's been told. No, but so why don't we stop? Why don't, why don't we all, all get together and stop oppression from anyone in the world, let alone... Or, or, we, we should all unite against oppression. It's not about who does the oppressing. We should unite against oppression. If a Muslim... Sure, sure, but then why aren't you so angry? Because you didn't see the pictures, are you not so angry about what happened on October the 7th? Of course, I told you. Any, any like, if a Muslim commits oppression, then I would be against that Muslim. It's not about a Muslim... Why, why are you not angry about the Uyghur Muslims in China? Of course, I've, I've petitioned. I've even rang up. Why aren't embassies. you marching I've weekly even... on that basis? I, I have been. I have been speaking to the Chinese why, embassy. Why, 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 why are you not angry about those children who who are seeing their lives uh, ripped up and torn apart? Of course, you, you think I'm not angry? You don't know me, James. But I've we don't been, see. I, well, I, I, we, you but I don't. You, but you I, I, that's as maybe. But I don't see. I don't see the marches taking place on that front. But you, you, what I'm saying, this is why, why aren't you angry about the children in Africa who are starving on a daily and dying on a daily basis because the corrupt governments are depriving them? James, you have no idea how much, how much I'm involved with everything. But anyway, look, as far as this concerns, this happens... Well, you don't talk about it on air. All you do is you come on and you, you berate uh, the UK for supporting Israel, which is uh, the only democratic state in that area, uh, and you seem not to be particularly uh, concerned that Israel has received a barrage of uh, rockets and missiles and munitions against it uh, and mass propagation for many years and is facing an enemy who, who doesn't think it should exist. And you've rewritten history, Khalid, so it's not surprising that uh, inevitably you, you're going to come on here and say what you say. It's not about that. James, when they've been doing it for decades, when they've been oppressing people they, and killing people for decades. They? Right. They've just been defending they themselves, Khalid. Israel, Israel has been killing Palestinians and locking them up, imprisoning children indefinitely for decades. Uh, with all due respect, Khalid, the Palestinians have uh, tried and probably were the first instigators that they uh, uh, they, they killed, they maimed, they uh, terrorised uh, Israel and Israeli citizens. It goes back to the point they do not think, and certainly some of them do not think, that Israel should exist. So if that's a problem and you, you're facing an enemy who doesn't think you should exist, funnily enough, you might defend yourself, Khalid. That's not defence. This killing of the daily killing, killing of people, women and children in the building, for example, just a few days ago. Only women and children were in the building. They flattened the whole building with everybody in. And now they're yes, using because that because Hamas, and it has been proven time and time again, Hamas have put their operatives, their people, in those buildings. But even if, even if even if what well, that ludicrous lie is is, is the truth. Well, it's James, not a lie. Even 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 if it's were, not a lie. If Hamas. It's Even not a lie. In that building. It's not a lie. It has been proven time and time again, Khalid. That's ridiculous. That's preposterous. But anyway, it's not James preposterous. Listen. Even, even, even if it was true, What is preposterous is, like, is that you've come onto this radio station to talk about something where it's very clear that you don't share the values of this nation, you don't share the values of this government, you don't understand what Hamas stands for, and yet uh, you continue to berate uh, this government, uh, our government, and, and frankly it would be the same if the opposition were in charge as well. In terms of our international relations, it sounds as if you are misaligned, Khalid. I'm not misaligned, James. You, you, you don't understand what humanity is, I'll be honest with you. you, know, if, if you, if you I don't understand what humanity is. Really? Yes, of course. Really? Really, really. What you do I not I, understand, Khalid? I, don't, I, kind of, I cannot accept that. You know, you, do you not feel for these children? Do you not feel for the innocent? Of course I do. Know? I've said it on countless occasions. I don't want to see any loss of life, any so then, needless loss so of why life. Don't, why, don't, why, don't you, why don't you stick up? For the for the innocent, say, listen, this should stop. We should be pushing Israel to stop this. Why can't, why you, why can't you understand that? It could stop tomorrow if Hamas stopped their actions. No, it could stop. It wouldn't stop tomorrow, James. They they they, they want, they've already made this. They're making the, the the port where the port is being built. They're using the rubble from you know the the rubble that's being used where the crushed bones and everything. Else. They're using that same dead bodies and things to build the pier, right? Where the port's going to. What sort of evil plan is that? 
you know, this is this is beyond this is beyond anything I've seen in my life. Well, I've it's, never seen it's about evil, trying actually. to get humanitarian aid into an area that needs it. I mean, listen, if uh, if Israel wanted to obliterate uh, millions of lives, they could do so. What they've tried to they do is do. they've tried to they minimise uh, uh, civilian loss. Uh, but if they're dealing with an enemy who uh, continually uses human shields, which it does, continually. Um, continues with their barrage of munitions, which they do, uh, this could have stopped very quickly. But it, they're dealing with um, um, a, a, an enemy uh, who, who, who doesn't want to see them exist. Uh, you know, we're going in circles, uh, Khalid, but I, I genuinely think that uh, if you think that what's going on in the Middle East is the biggest threat to the UK, I think uh, you need to go and have a little lie down. I need to go James right you know seriously you you have to you know let's take a deep breath right seriously right let's think what is going to happen are we are we accepting what is happening in in, in Gaza do we accept that you know it's I okay I don't accept it I don't want to see it I I would like to see an end to the fighting immediately it's not just fighting James is it this is a this is an annihilation of a population this is it's, well, it's not, not. It's not two armies it's, it's not, not because armies. they're still there it's not two armies with equal tanks and equal, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Oh, um, oh so whose fault is guess. that, Khalid? I mean, to say, oh, it's not fair, it's not equal. It's like, how many conflicts have taken place on this planet where it's like, oh, well, we can't start the war yet because uh, both sides aren't equal. What a lot of nonsense. You really do it's spout not, utter drivel. It's, it's, it's not about sides. I'm saying that you're saying it's, it's, it's not it's your normal voice. Mostly innocents are being killed. That's what I'm saying. I, um, innocents day... are being killed. And, and I think everybody from all sides of that particular conflict would wring their hands at that, Kelly. Uh, that is not the point. The point is that Hamas still exists. Hamas does not recognise that Israel exists. Hamas does not want to see Jewish people exist. Until or unless that changes, there's going to be a problem. No, there's no. See, see, again, you're conflating. Nobody says that Jewish people shouldn't exist. They don't say that. If that was the case, then it's exactly. Be... It's exactly what Hamas say. No, no, no. Listen. Well, they, no, they, no. They, no. They, I don't care how many times you tell me to listen, Kelly. I've done my work. I've done my research. I understand it. Now you could tell me till you're blue in the face uh, that that's not the case. It is the case. But what what what, what Israel is doing is totally anti-Jewish. What they are doing is nothing. Is completely against the commands of Judaism. So if anybody's a Jew, they should realise what everybody, any many Jews do, many Orthodox Jews. Anybody, yeah, I don't many, think they're going to take any march. lessons from you, Khalid. No, but I'm not taking. I'm not saying lessons. Many people who are Jewish march with the Palestinian. Um, uh, with the, what do you call it? Who, who Very few in the grand scheme. Yeah, but still, one of my point is, many people who have uh, who uh, um, uh, um, of the Jew day, um, Jew, uh, Jewish faith do say what Israel is doing is absolutely against and uh, against Judaism. Very few. So, uh, come on, killing of innocents. Where does that come in? Where does it come in? in, in Nobody the Torah, wants to not... see the killing of innocents, Kelly. No, I don't know what seeing. I'm saying what the commands. The commands are not there to kill innocents, to ethnically cleanse people. There is no. There is no. You know. There is no. The, uh, a theological Sorry, the uh, war against right Hamas that. is not about ethnic cleansing, Khalid. Yeah, they are. There. What, what, is, what's, what is happening, James? You wake up. What is happening in, in the, in the Gaza? What is there? happening is that Hamas is being taken apart from start to finish because Hamas it, does not want to. Yeah, I, I said again, and then and then we're done. Uh, Hamas does not want to realize that Israel is a nation state that it has a right to exist. Uh, so that is happening? what they are dealing with. It is not yeah, ethnic not cleansing. The, the language that you use is very inflammatory uh, and arguably incorrectly. Anyway, listen, we've, we've out-talked, we've outrun. You've had your say. If you think that's the biggest threat to the United Kingdom, well, good luck on you. Uh, but there we go. You've had your say. 0344 499 1000. Um, <laughs> We've even had calls to bring Ken on, it's that dire. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Khalid, thank you for your call, 0344 499 1000. That's the telephone number. we take more of your calls next here on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman, 
is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five forty-five is the time. It's me, James Max, with you till six. I got somewhat distracted there. Uh, I'm asking what the biggest threat to the UK is, as opposed to uh, the UK's foreign policy uh, when it comes to uh, supporting Israel. But there we go. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the telephone number. I must turn our attention. I've received quite a lot of incoming messages, so I'm sorry if I don't get to yours. Uh, I know spelled incorrect incorrectly here. Uh, if your number ends five eight oh, I mean really, uh, no is spelled K N O W. And anyway, I know why. I talk TV are one-sided. It's because it's run by Jewish people and, uh, missing a D, uh, the son is. And James, you are a racist and you are fake. Well, thank you very much indeed for those kind words there. Uh, shame you didn't put your name or indeed uh, spell it right. Uh, James, you're right. The pro-Palestinian marches are violent because any counter-protests have to be kept away by the police for their own safety, says John. Um, <laughs> James, if Khalid says he's the calmest one in the family, then I think himself and his family need to find himself a country that suits their interests. Obviously, his family do not have an attitude of a free country and do not deserve the freedoms that befit a country like Britain, says Sandra. Interesting times. Let's go to Gemma, who is in... Uh, where are you, Gemma? Staffordshire, I believe. Gemma, good morning. Sofa. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Gemma. So that was quite feisty, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I was... Intently listening. I mean, he's, he's very good at making his point, wasn't he? I mean, and he didn't sort of stop until he made him. He's, he's highly he's highly articulate. He knows what he wants to say. Um, I, I am concerned that there are people with those views living in our country, frankly, uh, that mm. at least they can't see both sides of it and also cannot yeah. recognise... Look, nobody wants to see, and if anybody projects on me that I want to see innocent uh, lives being lost, if I want to see the suffering that Palestinian people are going through. If I want to see yeah. uh, the rubble and the mess and the destruction and the... I mean, just every, it's awful. Awful, awful, awful in every regard. I would like to see it stop yesterday. Um, mm. And no innocent lives should be lost anywhere. However, I do also understand that until or unless one deals with a threat... Yeah, I mean... It has to be dealt I mean, with. Yeah. I mean, the question is, what's the biggest threat to the UK? Well, I mean, 
Tell him, what, what was his answer? Did you get? Did you establish what his answer was? Yeah. That's so, okay. Well, since he didn't answer it, what what is your answer? What do you think is well, the biggest threat? Ignorant. I'm on. I'm on abstract now at the moment. Oh. I think that's wow. <laughs> if, if 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 ignorance is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we're all no, doomed. <laughs> let's, let's have a world where we're, we we speak. So like, one of the things that I find when I have this immigration argument and all of that is that the, the best people to talk about it are the ones who never stop talking. But they're the peacemakers. They're the pacifiers. You can't keep talking to them forever because you don't know what's going on behind you. So, you know, just because somebody says something in a way which you don't like does not mean that if you just pretend they said it in a different way. I mean, he was going, wake up, James. I mean, if someone says that to me, I'd be annoyed. Do you know what I mean? Well, I... I, I don't think it's my job to get annoyed, Gemma. Uh, exactly. It's my job to facilitate conversation and to... Uh, it's your ride. job to make sure that James has got the posture after it, isn't it? You're that kind of... Yes, kind of yes. The, well, that's, that's the level of ignorance that I seek to strive to remove. Exactly. And you should see some of the stuff that uh, is sent to me on the socials. Uh, oh, I know. Family. It's just like, if you had paid for your education, I'd ask you to go and get your money back. <laughs> James, let me finish because I've got to go to the toilet. But and you're doing the papers, aren't you? Are you not doing the papers? There was today? too much information. That was oversharing, Gemma. We don't need Sorry. to know that. Anyway, before you have to go, tell me what you need to tell me. I get messages from children occasionally, right? Because I'm a teacher and because I have their parents numbers. Do you share okay, with the but... children? Excuse me, this lesson's going to finish quickly because I've got to go to the. Full stop. Yeah. Remember the days of Telegram. Full stop. Full stop. Remember the royal family. Right. Let's just think about them. Okay. They're, let's let's think them, about them. You know. we have. Uh, very quickly before you go to the lavatory, uh, which newspaper would you like? Well, I'm gonna go with the Sun today. Okay. Uh, the Sun it is. Uh, a Don't number between one. A number between one and fifty-two, please. Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. All right. Let's see what's on page eighteen. Oh, how about this? Eggheads are altering the DNA oh, of yeah egg, 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 eggheads oh. yeah are altering the DNA of Britain's favourite potato so it cooks as fast as pasta and rice. They want the Maris Piper to compete with fast boiling foods and create a robust <laughs> super spud less likely to bruise and become discoloured. The UK produces five million tons of spuds a year, but the government funded gene editing project, code name. Uh, tuber gene, uh, comes amid a <laughs> decline in fresh potato sales with many people preferring faster cooking alternatives. Yeah. Well, I mean, so that's a, a potato Olympics. I did that in year six. We had to do this thing. Um, I, um, it was my idea. Right. It was like an eco week. And uh, we had to put our... We had to empathise with the potato. So to make the potatoes feel better, they went into a um, like an Olympics race and you had the Maris fight exactly like that. Right. Um, I thought and you obviously needed... the cooking lesson was baked potato. I thought baked you needed potato. to go to the loo, Gemma. I do. OK, bye. Um, just very quickly, just before we get to Vicky, let's uh, give Lawrence a quick word. Lawrence, hello, good morning. Good morning, James. Uh, good morning, Lawrence. I don't have long, I'm afraid, because I need I to speak... I know you don't. I, I need to speak but... to Vicky Price, but I, I wanted to speak to you before <laughs> well, I do uh... that. I must admit, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather <laughs> if you're looking for the economic advice from that, you're in the wrong place. Now, listen, the greatest threat to wow. this country at the time is internal. Oh, yes. Both by those who live in here in the country and for some reason despise it. Yes. And for those who have invested interest in constantly taking their attention away from the problems of the country. Mm. And they are obsessed with this thing, something about us. That we are really either very stupid people who must believe that the, that the economy is better handled by others or by people in the country who believe that we are such we are bad people. And it's a constant change. We are a terrible people. We are white privileged. We are, we are, we are colonialists. And it never stops. Oh. Almost, um, sorry, um, do I need to do I need to um, go and wring my hands over white privilege? No, no, that's, no. I'm, what I'm putting an to you is this is what frightens me. But all of this stuff oh. is just always a constant attempt to persuade the mass of the, the mass of the population that there's something either wrong with them or if there's an economic hardship, the politicians, etc., will say, "Look over there to that terrible thing over there. Look over there to that terrible thing over there." 
And these, you can never, somehow, what happened to us, we ever said our politicians and people internally don't really want us to think for ourselves. Well, let's think for ourselves then. Uh, Lawrence, thank you very much indeed for your call. I would like more time, but I'm sure you will call back again. Meanwhile, let's turn our attention to the world of finance and money. Vicky Price, Chief Economic Advisor at the Centre for Economics and Business Research, joins me now. Uh, Vicky, good morning. Uh, let's good talk, morning. Good morning. Let's talk about uh, the triple lock. There's been discussion about it. Looks like the Tories are going to keep it, and it looks like uh, Keir Starmer may not keep it. We don't know the second bit yet because they're saying, Labour is saying they're going to look at what uh, the situation is like in the future. They keep on saying that. Uh, they have uh, concerns about where the, the, the fiscal side of uh, the balance sheet is going to be by the time of the election. So um, we'll see. But yes, there is a um, there was a bit of a debate about whether it might be altered in terms of the way it's you calculate the triple lock because as uh, you remember, I'm sure, and as your listeners will remember, uh, pension um, payments are meant to increase either by two and a half percent or by the earnings uh, growth over the previous year or by inflation, whichever is highest. And what's happening right now is because inflation is higher than those other two, um, then uh, the, the the increase that pensions are going to see mm. in April is just over eight percent. They had already a ten percent increase or just above uh, the year before. So the question is, what happens next, and is it affordable? And so the, there was a question mark as to whether the Conservatives are going to have that in the manifesto. And Jeremy Hunt yesterday said he would, despite the extra cost, which is estimated, has been estimated so far, the extra bit that they have to pay um, in terms of the overall um, uh, budget for welfare uh, is about £11 billion a year. So we, we will have to see what political battles uh, fight over there. And meanwhile, Jim in Cranbrook has been in touch and just put in capital letters bookshelf, uh, which I'm sure uh, you're pleased to hear, Vicky. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure that's something that you always like to hear from him on that. Meanwhile, uh, when should we sell our home? If you want to sell our home, presumably just before an election is probably the wrong time to do it. It's really very interesting because there was an, some analysis done by uh, a company called Data Loft. Well, sounds interesting, the name itself, um, which uh, which had a look at what's been happening to house prices before and after various elections. And they've decided that actually not good news, um, certainly after. So uh, if you were to sell is what they hint at, you better do it now because oh, all the ones that okay. they've looked at, prices go down after the election for a while. Do so, it now. So, right. OK, yes. just just uh, in less than a sentence, uh, Labour says that they will stick with workers' rights plans despite uh, Lord Mandelson's remarks against it. This is dealing with things like uh, zero hours contracts. Uh, will uh, Labour reform our workers' rights, do you think? Uh, I think they are intent on doing so. There isn't an awful lot that differentiates them from uh, the Conservatives, and I think that's mm. one of them, because it, it is protection against unfair dismissal, for example, how much you get when you're sick, parental leave, which is really important. So basically that you have rights on all these issues from day one right. of actually joining a company. The business uh, community is already reacting slightly negatively to that, as you'd expect, but that's what they intend to do, they say. They do indeed. Vicky Price, Chief Economic Advisor at the Centre for Economics and Business Research. Thank you very much indeed for joining us once again here on Talk. It's much appreciated. Talking of talk, I will be back tonight at seven o'clock for prime time. I hope you join me then. Meanwhile, next on Talk TV, it's Talk Today with uh, Jeremy Carl and Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. 
They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on mm. the fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently.